Hi, I'm Dr. Kave, and I want to tell you how much anxiety and depression can affect your body even when you're unconscious under anesthesia and how much it can affect your body even outside the operating room like at work. Number one, the more anxious you are, the more pain you might have when you wake up and the more pain you have, the longer your recovery is going to take. I see this in patients who are having a nerve block. I do nerve blocks when I want to numb a part of the body, kind of like when you go to the dentist office and they numb your teeth so that the patients don't don't need as much anesthesia because they're already numb in that part of their body where the surgery is going to happen. Here's actual video of me doing nerve blocks for patients who are having shoulder surgery or foot surgery. The more anxious you are before surgery, the more you tend to contract your muscles like this, kind of like bending over like that in a flexed position. It's the natural fright or flight response when we get stressed out or anxious. And it can actually prevent the needle from my nerve block from going near the nerves that I'm trying to numb for you. If I can't get the needle in the right place, there's a good chance that you might wake up with more pain afterwards. If patients are very anxious, I will give IV sedatives like midazolam or Versed, but it might not be quite the same as if your body truly is at its baseline calm state. And the more pain you have after surgery, especially the first 24 hours after surgery, when the nerve block is working best, it sets you up for a longer recovery, potentially with more pain, because your brain is getting wound up and sensitized to that extreme pain when you wake up from surgery on the operating room table. Number two, the more anxiety and depression you have, the more anesthesia you might need to fall asleep. And the more anesthesia you need, the more complications and side effects you may potentially have. The best example is for surgeries that can be done with sedation versus general anesthesia. I have a whole video on this, you should check it out. But the main difference is that for sedation, you often don't need the breathing tube to support your breathing. Here's a video of me actually placing that breathing tube. It's going right past the vocal cords. So if you're a professional singer, for example, I'd rather not use this breathing tube unless there's no other choice, of course, because it might dislodge your vocal cords or the cartilage around them that could cause hoarseness or voice changes that might impact your career. There's also a risk of dental damage when we do intubations like this for surgery. The more in anesthesia you need, whether it be the white stuff like propofol here, or the gases that come out of the ventilator like the one behind me, the more chance of side effects and complications, like more nausea, more pain, or even being more groggy for the rest of that day, or sometimes even for the next couple of days. If a patient is too anxious and takes too many psychiatric medications, I may not be able to do the surgery with sedation alone, meaning that I may need to do general anesthesia with that breathing tube. In addition to the side effects from the breathing tube, they also won't be able to wake up as fast and they might be more groggy and have a higher risk of nausea because they needed that much more anesthesia medication to tolerate the breathing tube versus just breathing on their own comfortably for sedation. That's because anxiety really does wind up your brain, meaning that you need more anesthesia. And we can't give you unlimited anesthesia without the breathing tube because anesthesia causes you to stop breathing. That's why we have the whole ventilator here and breathe for you. Finally, number three, the risk of relapsing into major depression or severe anxiety is higher if you have unmanaged mental health conditions before surgery. Your mental health can get worse after surgery and anesthesia for several reasons. It could be pain from the surgery. It might be the effect of the anesthesia medications. It could even be the loss of a body part, like losing your uterus for a hysterectomy. It may also be from anesthesia awareness, which is when you might be aware of what's going on during the surgery. Overall, that's very rare, but sometimes patients don't quite remember why they might have symptoms of hyperarousal, chronic fear, or ultimately PTSD-like symptoms that kind of came out of nowhere after surgery. That might be because you're brain couldn't fully form memories of you being a little bit awake during your surgery because the anesthesia impaired the memory formation, but your body was still awake enough to feel the potential trauma from the surgery. Because of all these reasons that might worsen your mental health after surgery, it's always a good idea to optimize your mental health before going under anesthesia. And that means making sure that you have a good support network for your surgery and recovery period, touching bases with your mental health specialist before surgery to optimize your medications, and to do what you're doing now and learning about your body and the anesthesia process because typically the more knowledge patients have before surgery, the less fearful and less anxiety they have about the surgery and anesthesia process itself. Another important part about mental health after surgery that patients don't know about is that 
Relapsing into major depression or severe anxiety with panic attacks or even PTSD can all make your surgery less successful and increase complications. Those complications could be blood clots or infections or not getting the pain relief from the surgery intended to relieve your pain in the first place. And fortunately, so much of this can be prevented when mental health is optimized before surgery. Mental health is so important before surgery and even when you're under anesthesia because your body really does keep score of what happens to it. And the stronger your mental health is before that trauma, the better prepared your body and brain are going to be to recover and get back to living your life.